to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Yes. Yes. All right. Praise God. We all are. If you've got your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to the book of Nehemiah, the first chapter. Uh, I've been praying. You know, we've got a revival coming up. Just 12 days. <coughs> and uh, uh, before you plant a garden, you just, you, you, you can't just go out and throw the seeds in it. You've got to break up and prepare the ground. I, I remember when I was living out in that old Pura Valley there in California. And, well, we had a back of our house. We had a field there that was sort of alkali and uh, uh, hard old ground. And, and one day we decided that when I was about 11 or 12 years old, we uh, got our pop bottles and went and bought some packets of seed. I think they were about a nickel a packet. And we were going to have us a garden and uh, got our shovels and we tried to dig, but man, that ground was hard. And finally, we just said that you know the. the Heck with this, so we, we sort of punched a hole in the ground and put our seeds in there and went and watered. I don't, I don't think any of them seeds ever came up. Not a one, you know. It's uh, that old Imperial Valley. Uh, 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 Jason knows it better than anybody here. We were both born in Brawley, California, and it gets hot, 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 hot. Uh, I've seen it 118. We didn't have any air conditioning. We had an old swamp dead, or desert cooler, if you want to call it, down there. And, but just miserable. But uh, you have to, if we really are sincere about revival, we have to start preparing for revival. <laughs> revival is not something that you just conjure up. It's not something that you can, that you can, uh, uh, where we can get our worship team up here and, and, and get get our little pom poms and and, and 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 be cheerleaders and say Jesus, Jesus, He's our man. If He can't do it, any but nobody can. Yeah. You know, we're not cheerleaders. It's not something that you can work up. It's something that has to be prayed down. Revival has to be prayed down. And uh, uh, I was looking at Nehemiah here. We preached on it before. But, the, uh, you know, that's the, the nice thing about the Bible. You know, if, if you're a miner, you can eventually you can play your mind out where there's nothing else to mind in it. But the Word of God... You, you can think that you know all of it there is to, about a certain chapter or, or a certain book, and, and there's always some more nuggets to find in the Bible. The Word of God is alive. Hallelujah. It's, Hallelujah. There's, no, there's nothing dead about it. And uh, we, need, we need to uh, talk about Nehemiah a little bit. You know, uh, you, let, let's set up the deal here. Uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had conquered the Jews. And he had destroyed Jerusalem and he had carried away the Jews into captivity. Uh, I think when he carried Daniel away, Daniel was already a, a fairly old gentleman. And then after Nebuchadnezzar died, well, Nebuchadnezzar you find most of this story, a lot of the miracles, Daniel in the lion's den, I believe. And, and uh, uh, you read about the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But after Nebuchadnezzar died, his son Belshazzar took over. And, and Belshazzar was not, you know, Nebuchadnezzar was <laughs> pretty hungry at times, but, but uh, Belshazzar didn't even come close to the character that his father had. And uh, he decided to take all the, the sacred vessels and the sacred uh, uh, cups and stuff that they had taken out of the temple at Jerusalem, and he decided to have a party with it. And they went in there and they had a big party. And you know the story how uh, all of a sudden a hand came down. They were drunk and everything. And a hand came out of nowhere and it wrote on the wall, Meany, meany, tinkle, you farce. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Uh, is what uh, uh, I believe that uh, Daniel came and interpreted it to him. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. And this night I'm going to give your kingdom to the Medes and the Persians. So it was the end of the, of the Babylonian Empire. And, and it became the Persian Empire. And, and Nehemiah uh, had a pretty cushy job here. He, was, he lived in the house of the king. He was the king's cupbearer, which I, uh, I guess he was a uh, chief wine taste, taster. And which is a pretty good job as long as nobody tries to poison the king. But uh, he, he lived in the palace. He had a pretty good job. But Nehemiah had a problem. And, and and I got to looking at this, and you know what Nehemiah's problem was? He was a slave. He was a slave. And as I look out into the 
the spiritual uh, horizon of the church in America. Uh, uh, we've lost a lot of the power that, that, and, the, and the former glory that we used to have. Oh sure, we've got it, we've got it fairly easy. We've got uh, cars to drive. We've got uh, a nice. Uh, it may not be depends on what you consider nice. I got a small home, but it's nice to me, and I enjoy going home, and I enjoy uh, uh, sleeping either in my chair or my bed, and, and and I enjoy my home. But if you've ever been to a foreign country, and I know some of you that have been in the service, you realize just how good we have it here. If you're talking physically wise in America, Dave, I know that you've probably seen some things in your tour in the Marine Corps that, that uh, allows you to see some poor places. I, I've been to Haiti. That was the poorest country that I, I think I, I saw. Uh, the, the average income is two hundred and I think forty dollars somewhere around there, and that's a year. Two hundred forty dollars a year is the average income. And uh, I've seen. Uh, I was counting this morning, like nine different countries I've been to. And, and a lot of them, most of them were not near as prosperous as this nation. So Nehemiah had it pretty good. He, he, he lived in the palace. He ate the king's food. But he was a slave. And, and many of us, you know, are, are, are slaves spiritually, so to speak, because we've allowed the enemy to come in and, and uh, I don't know if it's... I, I blame... Us behind the pulpit. I blame myself. I blame other pastors. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. And if we are not preaching the entire complete word of God. And the enemy is at the gate. And he's pounding at the gate. And we start to compromise. You cannot compromise with the devil. Compromise with the devil is just another word for surrender. You can't compromise with the enemy. But Nehemiah was a slave. And... To, but Nehemiah remembered. He had a memory. And, and even though I wasn't there at the day of Pentecost, and, and I wasn't there when Azusa Street took place, I can read, uh, uh, to substitute for my memories, I can read about the revivals that took place uh, when the fire fell on the 120 in the upper room at Pentecost, and when the fire fell at Azusa Street, and, and, and the Welsh revival, and the, and the different revivals that took place in America. I can read, and, and I, I can remember, and I can then look and see what the things that are taking place now. And, and I, it's, you know, I'm, I'm tired of just having a memory of the former glory. I want to see the glory. Show me your glory, God. Show us your glory. You know, I'm tired of reading about miracles that take place in Africa. I, 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 don't get me wrong, I, I enjoy it. But I'm tired of just reading about it there. I want to see it happen here. Yeah. I told you last week about how I was, was teasing Esther because she was watching this same program over and over and over again. So I was sort of teasing her about it. says, you're watching it again? And she said, yeah, but I haven't seen anybody raised from the dead yet. She, she wants to see some miracles. I want to see people raised from the dead. I don't want to settle for just uh, uh, what others call miracles. I want to see signs and wonders that follow us, not because, because of who we are. Several years before Nehemiah had uh, the story of Nehemiah takes place, in fact, the book right before it in Ezra, the ninth chapter, you can read about uh, Ezra the scribe, how uh, he was allowed to return to Jerusalem uh, by the same Persian king. And I can't pronounce his name, so I'm not even going to try. But the same Persian king, he allowed Ezra to return. And, and, and oh, I was telling you about Belshazzar. This is the same palace where the handwriting was on the wall. Same palace, but at a different time. But he allowed Ezra re to return. And in fact, he allowed any Jew that wanted to return to go with him. And I was reading, and I don't know, the figures are probably not exactly right. But they said that there was around 45 million Jews in ca captivity uh, that had been carried away to captivity. And anyway, when they, he offered them, he says, you can go back. 
But you know, too many of them had grown comfortable where they were at. Too many of them had, had built homes and, and had businesses there in Babylon, and, and, and they didn't want to go back. And I think I read somewhere that out of the 45 or 50 million, only about 2 million Jews returned home to Jerusalem. It was only a remnant. And you know, but God is going to have a remnant. And I want to be a part of God's remnant. I want, to, I want to return to the former glories. I want to see greater things than these. Yeah. But I got to looking at uh, uh, these prayers that uh, Nehemiah made, not only the prayer that, that, Ezra, that Nehemiah, but Ezra made, and even Daniel. And, and they were almost identical. You can read about the prayer of Ezra in the ninth chapter. You can read about the, of Ezra, and you can read about the prayer of Daniel in the ninth chapter of Daniel. But let's read this prayer right here. Uh, let's start at the first verse. It says, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hashemiah. He says, And it came to pass in, in the month uh, Chislu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushia, the palace, that Hen and I, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah. And I asked him uh, concerning the Jews, and I'm reading it to King James, and uh, your Bible probably expresses it a little bit better. He, in other words, he just asked about how things were going. Uh, concerning the Jews which had escaped and, and which were left of the captivity and, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity, there in the providence, are in great affliction and reproach. The walls of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. Uh, uh, Jerusalem was, was a fairly large city in that day. And uh, there were a lot of... that. The walls were high and the walls were thick. Uh, but he said the walls were broken down. And he said the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are a great affliction and reproach. Uh, the walls of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. So when Nehemiah heard this, he, he had a vision. He remembered the former glory. You know, he had he he was not alive, but he remembered uh, uh, stories about how that when, when Solomon dedicated the temple, and you know when Solomon dedicated the temple, the Bible says that I believe over a hundred thousand sacrifices were made. Over a hundred thousand sacrifices were made, and the glory of the Lord came down so that the priests could not stand. The, the Shekinah glory came down. And the priest of the Lord could not stand to minister between the porch and the altar. And he even heard those stories. And it just broke his heart. He said that it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and I wept. Now many of us can, when we see a sad movie, we can cry. When we can see a, a, a sad things, we cry. But the Bible says he went beyond in tears. He said, I sat down and I wept. And I mourned. How many know that, that mourning, when you lose someone that's dear to you, mourning goes much deeper than tears. Tears can be shallow. An actress can, can manufacture tears. Or an actor, and they can be shallow. But mourning gets down deep in the heart. And, 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 and Nehemiah was in mourning. He says, he, I sat down and I wept. And I mourned certain days. And I fasted and I prayed before the God of heaven. And he said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive. You see, the first thing he did, he reminded the Lord of the promises that he kept. He reminded the Lord of how great he was. And as I looked at the prayers of Ezra, and as I looked at the prayers of Elijah, I mean, not Elijah, but uh, Daniel, it was the same type of prayer. He reminded the Lord of his greatness and the mighty things that he'd done. And he said, I beseech you, O God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love and observe his commandments. Let thine ears be attentive and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee day and night for the children of Israel, thy servant, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we, you notice he said, we have sinned. I want to give you a news alert this morning. I want to give you a new news alert. 
Everyone that is a Christian is a part of the body of Christ and they are your body. And when you uh, uh, condemn or when you badmouth another Christian, you are committing fratricide. You are committing, you, you are actually uh, 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 cutting and destroying your own self because they are a part of the body of Christ. He says his prayer was a corporate prayer. Even though he was by himself, we have sinned. Yes. We, you know, I, I, I know and I, I believe that if we really want to see a revival uh, in 12 days that gets down into our heart, that we need to, to have humility. We need to start preparing the ground now and say, Lord, you know, I, 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 I want to be humble before you, Father. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, even though in Romans 8, what it says, there's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. That's right, it's not condemnation. But when we fail God and when we sin, we have the right to come before God Almighty because we are a part of the family. How? And we are changed into His image from glory to glory. Just because you've been born again doesn't mean that you're not going to have things in you and in your nature that are unlike God. I tell you, John, 1 John says, If any man say that he has no sin, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. But you know, if we, if we walk in the light, and walking in the light is being honest and open before God, and we need to be honest and open before God. If we walk in the light as he is, he is in the light, then we will have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, will cleanse us from all sin. Yes. But we have to be tender-hearted and, and full of humility. So uh, we, need to, we need to really desire to see God move in the former ways. 